and we have Brian on here too, because I know Andrew's hopping on in a little bit. Um, but I just want to do a little intro for Blake, um, just for those of you who don't know him. Is that okay if I just jump right into that? Is that all right? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Um, Blake is the co-founder and CEO of My Social Practice. Um, My Social Practice is just the whole point is to make dentists shine on social media. My office works with them, and I feel like every time I hear from you, Blake, we learn a lot. So I'm really excited to have you here. Um, My Social Practice is truly the number one social media marketing group for dentistry, and they've existed and been doing this for over a decade. Um, and I know, Blake, it'd be great to hear from you, too, on all of your expanded functions. You guys are doing a lot more than you were doing with then when we started with you, so I would like to hear about a lot of that as well. Um, okay. For years, I know you guys have played a major role in all the Crown Council's drive for Smiles for Life. You guys have been a huge driving force in helping raise millions of dollars for charity. Um, without you, I don't think Smiles for Life would be what it is. And you guys just make it easy. You make it easy for offices, for dentists, for teams, and you make it really fun, too. Um, you guys are headquartered in Draper, Utah, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're in, we're okay. in Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, Salt Lake. Okay, perfect. And you've got designers, writers, marketers. Um, your customer service people are amazing. Like I said, I work with one and she keeps me on it. I have a call with her scheduled like every three weeks and it, it keeps me focused and uh, helps me do what I need to do. Um, I hear that you had twins this month. I yes, did. is that yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm impressed that we have you here and I'm uh, really, really grateful that you're here to talk to us. So uh, with that, Blake, I'll let you kind of take it away. Tell us what you do. And then um, to the rest of the group and those of you who are listening later, um, is it okay if we email you for questions in the future if some of the people who aren't yes. here have questions? Okay. Yeah, that'd awesome. be great. I'll, I'll have my contact information at the end here. If you have any questions, I'd love to help. Perfect. Awesome. All right, Blake, thank you. All oh. right. You're welcome. Thanks for that introduction. I will uh, share my screen here. Oh, looks like uh, you might have to enable me, either Spencer or Aaron, to share my screen. But yeah, uh, we just had twins two weeks ago, and um, they're doing great. They came a little bit early. So they're actually in the NICU still. So we've been visiting them um, <laughs> about every day, but they're, they're doing good. They just need to get stronger, but it's been fun. To, we, we have a daughter too, that's 21 months old. So we are gonna have our hands full uh, with three kids <laughs> now. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let me share here. So I talked to Aaron and um, let me see. Oh, actually, let me try, let me do something real quick. Make sure my computer audio is working. Okay. Um, I talked with Aaron and uh, she kind of said to present on whatever I would like and whatever I think would help the group the most. Um, can everybody see, can you see my screen okay? Aaron, does it look full screen? Look perfect, or? yeah. Okay, good. So I decided that I'd like to talk to you about Instagram because it's one of my favorite subjects. I think there's some really um, useful things that you could be doing and uh, pertinent things that you can be doing right now on Instagram to grow your practice and reach more people. Um, we talk a lot about the three R's of social media marketing. At my social practice, their reach, relationships, and reputation. Um, you know, that's the purpose of why you're on social media, to reach more people in your community, uh, to build relationships with your current patients and prospective patients, and then to build your reputation um, in your community as well. And so uh, those are really the three purposes of social media. I think Instagram is a perfect place to do that. Um, I don't know, you know, everybody in this group, I don't know how advanced you feel about Instagram, or maybe you don't even have an Instagram page set up. Um, but hopefully this is, I will give eight fairly easy <laughs> Instagram marketing tips to help you attract new patients is what I'd like to talk about. And I'll and then, probably cut down. Just so you know, we're trying to create a little pod where everyone has each other's Instagram handles so we can like comment and do different things. So just so you know, we're kind of working toward that. So Instagram okay. advice is perfect. Oh, good. Okay. I'm glad that sounds like you guys are kind of working on it already. So hopefully this will help a little bit. And I might have to cut this presentation down just a little bit because it's, it's probably a little bit long, but 
Uh, Aaron kind of mentioned about my social practice, so I won't spend too much time on this, but um, we really do, we consider ourselves the number one comprehensive social media marketing solution for dental practices. We've been doing this for over 10 years now. Uh, we've partnered with some of the top industry leaders, including the Crown Council, and uh, we have one of the largest uh, social media presence in the dental industry. So if you'd like to follow us on Facebook or Instagram or check out our reviews, uh, feel free to. We also host the largest dental marketing, digital dental marketing conference. And we've been doing this for six years now. And last year we actually did it uh, virtual. We did it live. And so if you wanna learn more, uh, we just, we picked some of the top industry leaders in marketing um, in dentistry. And they gave a little short TED style talk um, about every subject that has to do with digital marketing. So you can still watch that if you go to ddmclive.com and you can get some CE credit as well from Crown Council. Um, Seth Godin, he's a marketing guru that we follow very religiously. <laughs> he said, marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories you tell. And I feel like Instagram is the best place that you can be telling your practice's story on social media right now. The reason is, is because there's over 1 billion monthly active users on Instagram, and there are over 500 million daily stories that are shared on Instagram. Also, it's the fastest growing social media platform. So Facebook is still the leader among adults that say that they use the platform, but Instagram is catching up and it's growing faster than Facebook. So Facebook is kind of flatlined in, in the usership. And Instagram, I think, will soon catch up and probably surpass Facebook because of how much uh, effort they're putting into Instagram right now to make it the leader. As far as engagement goes as well, um, Instagram gets the most engagement uh, over Twitter and Facebook. So when I say engagement, I mean people that like, comment, and share the content. And Instagram, more people uh, engage with the posts. So my tip number one, first, you need to know your audience in order to build your following. Probably one of the biggest um, questions that I get is how do I get more followers on Instagram? You know, I set up my account. Okay, now how do I get people to follow me? So first, you need to know who your audience, who are you trying to reach and build relationships with? And why are you trying to do that? So if you've set up a practice page um, on Instagram, um, you usually want to set that up with the name of your practice. Um, you'll want to focus on a local audience, so people in your local area that are prospective patients. And then you probably want to assign a team member to post to that page. So a team member that kind of knows what's going on in your practice, that's there, that's taking photos of what's happening day to day, and they're going to post on your page. Now, another strategy is to, to create a personal brand page. And this would be under your personal name. Um, you, could even you can have a personal account that you maybe don't allow just random people to follow and you can put that on private. But if you wanna have a personal account just for being a dentist, you might wanna call it, in this case, Anthony Manito. You could even put Anthony Manito DDS. And this is kind of his personal dental page. Uh, their focus might be on a national audience of not just prospective patients, but dental professionals and dental brands would be kind of the audience for that person. And then as a personal page, you should be doing all your posting. So you should be posting about things in your personal life, uh, different cases, especially if you have a dental audience, you might want to talk about technical uh, dental things that most people don't understand, but dentists would love it. Uh, so that's, that's a different strategy than just creating a practice page. And sometimes I get <clears throat> dentists that ask me, you know, they see accounts like uh, Dr. Brian Harris, for example, who has thousands and thousands of followers. And they think that their, their um, practice page should have that many followers and they don't understand why they don't have that many followers. Dr. Harris has a whole different strategy. He's built a personal brand around himself. He's uh, not only attracted attention of just influencers and, and um you know, different people that just like to see the, the cases that he does, but dentists as well that follow him. So that's why he has thousands and thousands of followers because he puts so much time into that to attract so many people. And there's tons of strategies to do that. But for a, just a practice page, um, you're going for a local audience. So the, 
the truth of it is, is you're probably not going to get as many followers as in that way, because you're going for a local audience that could be potential patients. So hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of two different strategies and you can do both. Um, you can link from your personal page in the bio, you can actually link to your practices page and you can link to maybe a personal uh, dental page that you have as well. So, um, and yeah, on your practice page, you can link to your personal page and personal page, you can link to your practice page. So that's, I think that's a good way to do it if, if you want to Try out, try out both. My tip number two, focus on getting patients to follow you first. Okay, focus on your current patients first. So um, here are a few ways to do that. You can offer in-office incentives. Uh, this practice here, they just put a little gift basket in their office and they say, on your next appointment, don't forget to put your name in the drawing to win bonus points. If you like us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram, and Facebook. So it's just a fun way to get the people in your office to think about your Instagram page and to go follow you. Name tags are kind of a, a, an interesting thing that in Instagram has recently released. If you click on the three bars on the top right-hand corner of your Instagram page, there's a uh, option that says name tag. And it creates this little screen here. And this is basically like a QR code for your Instagram page. So you can take that QR code. If you go to the bottom and click scan a name tag, it will um, bring up the code really big. And then you can actually screenshot that code and you can um, put it maybe on printed materials in your office on a poster or on these little table tents. Um, and then people can go to their name tag section of their Instagram page and just scan this and it'll go right to your page so they can follow you directly. So that's one way to do it. It's just a way to talk about it. Obviously you can just tell people what your handle is and they can go follow you. Um, but this is just kind of a fun way to draw some attention to it. And then set a goal and talk about it. I know this is always a hard thing because practices are busy and you have a lot to think about, but set a goal in your practice of how many followers you want to try to uh, get to, and then start talking to people. You know, are you on Instagram? Yes, I am. We've set a goal in our office to hit a thousand followers this year. Would you mind helping us out? And we have seen with practices that we work with, um, <clears throat> if you put this incentive in place, people get excited. They're willing to talk with patients about it. And we found that patients, if you ask them in a, in a very um, kind way, kind of like this, that 95% you know, of the time patients are willing to help you out, um, help you reach your goal and they'll go and follow you. So um, just remember to ask people. Tip number three, do the work to connect with poten potential patients. Now I, said that these are eight easy tips. This one is not as easy. Um, it takes work, but it will, it will work and it will pay off. But let me kind of explain what, how you can do this. So first use local hashtags. If you go to your discover page on Instagram, it's that magnifying glass there at the bottom and it'll, it'll take you to a search bar. And if you search your local city, so this is Lehigh, Utah, is what I put in, the, in here, which is a city close by. It will bring up the, oh, sorry, if you go to the tag section, which is the third tab over, and you put in your city, um, Lehigh, Utah, or you know, Salt Lake City, Utah, it will pull up the hashtags for that city. And you can see the top one there is Lehigh, Utah with 13.7 thousand posts. And so if you click on that, it will give you the option. You can actually follow that hashtag. So a lot of people follow different local hashtags that they like. And um, this, this tag has 13.7 thousand people that have used Lehigh, Utah in their post. So you can see the top posts for Lehigh, Utah and the most recent posts. And you can also see some related hashtags to that. So there might be Utah Valley is another hashtag that you can see. And what I would do is I would take all the hashtags that you find for your local area, some of the top hashtags that are, you can tell are being used a lot. And I would copy and paste those into your notes on your phone. And then every time you do a post on Instagram as the very first comment, so make the post and then as the very first comment, copy and paste all these popular hashtags in your area into the first comment. You don't have to put these hashtags in your caption. You can put it as the first comment and it kind of doesn't, you know, um, make your caption super busy with all the hashtags in it. And it, it's better kind of in that comment and Instagram will still recognize those hashtags. 
And people that follow those hashtags, they'll be able to see your content as you post it. This also helps too for you to show up on that discover page. If you use a lot of hashtags that someone might be interested in, um, there's a good chance that your content will start showing up in that, in that discovery page as well. Uh, something neat too, if you have a business Instagram page, on every single post, if you click on view insights on the bottom there, it'll tell you how many people your posts are reaching. So um, you'll see here, this is 3,094 accounts were reached. And then if you look down, you can actually see how many people your posts reached from the hashtags that you've used. So if you're doing that, if you're including all those hashtags and all your posts, you can see here, you know, 2,367 people saw it from the hashtag um, and the reach was 3,094. So a lot of people saw that just because um, this account used a lot of hashtags in that. Um, personally connect with people. I want to show this little clip by Gary V. A lot of you have maybe heard of Gary V. Um, he's kind of a colorful <laughs> marketing guru. I just want to, I want to share this with you real quick. Oh, you know what? I don't have it included in here. <laughs> I have it. I had it on another presentation as a separate file, but, um, yeah, this, this is not working, but that's probably good because I don't have a ton of time actually in this presentation. We'll to, but uh, You can send it to us on an email. You'll leave us hanging. Oh yeah, good. Okay, I'll send you a couple clips actually through this presentation and you can watch them. Gary yeah. V basically says the way that he built his following is he just went in and did the work. He commented on people's posts. So he would search different hashtags or um, he would search different geotags and he would just go to people's posts and he would just comment something, something relevant. He'd look at the post, he'd say, you know, something that was actually meaningful, not just some spam type of comment. So for example, what you can do is search Lehigh, Utah in your geo tags and in Instagram, and it'll show you the recent posts and the top posts. So if you were to go to recent posts and <laughs> click on this post here, uh, you can see, you know, this guy and his pet snake. And I found this photo of this couple that maybe went for an anniversary dinner somewhere. So think about what you could say meaningful to each one of these people without being <laughs> creepy or weird, right? <laughs> you can just say, hey, I love that restaurant. Um, you know, I hope you enjoyed your, your date there. And you could obviously say something funny about this guy's pet snake, right? So if you comment and you say something sincere, there's a good chance that somebody will click on your profile and go check you out and see what you're all about and maybe even follow you. And I know sometimes, I mean, that takes a lot of work to just go to people's posts and say something nice. But, um, you know, if, if you do it enough, it was what Gary V talks about. If you really put in the work and you want to get the followers and want people to, to uh, see your profile, um, it works. It, and that's what social media is all about. It's about socializing and connecting with new people. All right, tip number four, shout out to other local businesses. So this um, Instagram account does a great job in doing that. They, for lunchtime, they'll go out to a local business and they'll just take a selfie there and say why they like the local business so much. Um, so if there's a burger place you guys like to go to or a place you get your coffee or a place where you get your flowers, um, go over there, take a picture, say, tag them in the post, say why you like going there. And there's a good chance that they have Instagram page too with a lot of followers. And if you do that, they'll probably share your post on their story or their, they'll share it on their page. And then they'll tag your practice and say, hey, we love the guys at Slave Lake Dental. They come in all the time. Uh, they're so nice. They're great people. And they'll kind of give you a shout out as well. So and their followers are probably people in your local area, which is your uh, target demographic as well. So uh, this is just a great way to support local businesses and to also get some um, publicity in return. Uh, one thing you can do is you can, you, if you don't go over there and take a picture there and this you know, with COVID and everything, um, it might be hard to go over there or whatever, but you can just screenshot their profile and just tag them. You could do it on Friday. There's a thing called Follow Friday. So you can just uh, screenshot a bunch of your local businesses around your office and say Follow Friday and then tag the business. 
and say why you've tagged them. Our team loves to go to lunch at Burgers Plus, and um, there's a good chance that they'll reshare their posts. It's really easy on stories to reshare content, and they'll tag you, and then people can check you out from their posts. So, I've run a giveaway. So giveaways, I think, are one of the best ways to get more followers on Instagram or any social media account. And these can be simple to more complex. This is a really simple one. It just says fall giveaway time. Are you team pumpkin spice and everything nice? Or are you no way, Jose, no pumpkin for me? <laughs> Let us know in the comments what's your favorite fall treat and enter to win a $50 Starbucks gift card. Tag a friend in a separate comment for an additional entry. So Starbucks gift card, uh, especially during fall, is a great time to run a Starbucks uh, giveaway. Really simple $50 gift card if they tag their friends and answer the simple question. So don't make your question super hard, just make it really simple. Um, you can see all these responses, people tagging their friends and um, them announce, announcing the winner. They announce the winner in a separate post. This one is more complex and a, a much bigger giveaway. It was a Mother's Day a smile makeover giveaway. And um, this practice just had you tag different mothers in your area for Mother's Day and say why they deserved a smile makeover. And so you can nominate different people in your area. This was, a, this was worth about $20,000, this smile makeover that they were giving away. But you can see this comment here of people that just talk about um, different women in the area that are great mothers that, uh, you know, they, they tell their story and say why they deserve it. So um, this just is a very charitable type of giveaway. People like working with people that are doing good for others in the community and, uh, but obviously a bigger type of giveaway. This one's a giveaway that was run on an influencers page. So I'm going to talk in a minute. My next tip is actually about working with influencers, but um, the giveaway doesn't have to be run on your Instagram account. So if you have a, somebody that comes into your practice that has a lot of followers or someone you do a deal with, an, an influencer that you do a deal with, and maybe you give them a discount on their treatment or um, maybe a free teeth whitening for them to post about you, you could run a giveaway on their page. So you can see here that um, this practice, this was Dr. Ellis that decided to do a $1,500 giveaway for, uh, I think it was a smile makeover giveaway. And the rules of this, so they went to, they did some work for Sarah Jane Warner. She has 36.3 thousand followers. And then she posted it on her page and said, here's how to enter. Follow Dr. Chad Ellis and the Smile Studio and Sarah Jane Warner. So she wants you to follow her as well. And then she said, like this po post and head over to Dr. Chad Ellis's giveaway post and tag all your friends that make you smile. Each tag counts as an entry. I like how she put this tag all your friends that make you smile. So she put a purpose to tagging, not just tag your friends. Um, if they want a, a chance to win, it was tag your friends that make you smile. So when people get tagged, they actually feel good about being tagged, not just annoyed. Um, but the purpose is to get Dr. Ellis more followers, get the Smile Studio more followers, and it reaches a lot of people because Sarah Jane Warner has a lot of followers. So that's a good way to run a giveaway on Instagram is to work with an influencer, which is my next tip. Work with Instagram influencers. So I have a whole presentation about Instagram influencers. Yeah, there's so much that you could be doing, um, but if you're not sure what an inf influencer is, these are just people that have a large following. Maybe um, this can be a national following or a local following. And they um, influence people based on certain subjects or certain topics that they have a passion for. So this is Motivation Mindy. She loves food, fitness, and life. So she does a lot of posts about um, the different meals that she makes and the, her fitness routine and her family. And she's gotten a big following because of it. People like her content. So during Smiles for Life, we actually worked with Motivation Mindy and she posted to her um, following. She went into McKiff Dental to get her teeth whitened for charity. And then she told her following about this great charity for Smiles for Life. And she tagged McKiff Dental. She talked about the Smiles for Life Foundation and she reached a ton of people through this post. Uh, this was an influencer we worked with outside of Smiles for Life um, with one of our clients. She has 17.9 thousand followers 
And she went in and she got her teeth whitened for free from the practice in exchange for talking about the practice. And she ran a little giveaway. Actually, it wasn't a giveaway. She gave a little discount to her followers that they could get that same whitening treatment that she got um, if they just told the practice that they saw this post. Um, so this, this practice from this uh, influencer's post actually got five new patients because her followers trust her and they uh, like what she posts and they ended up contacting the practice to go in for teeth whitening as well. So five new patient, there were 834 combined likes of her uh, posts that she did. Uh, the practice actually got a 40% increase to their followers just because she tagged the practice in all of her posts. And then 15,802 people viewed uh, the content. So it's a great way to reach a lot of people if you can find the right types of influencers. Tip number seven, focus on quality engagement. I'll skip this little clip, I'll include it um, in an email, but this is a clip just about why quality engagement is better than quantity. Uh, meaning people are sometimes so concerned about getting a lot of followers and a lot of comments and a lot of likes on their posts. But if you can focus more on quality over quantity, uh, it will go a long ways on social media. So the people that do comment on your, on your posts, um, make sure to respond back to those people that comment. Uh, make sure to reach out to the people that are engaged with your content because those are your true fans. And if you take care of your true fans, then um, it'll go a long way. Um, also, something about how to get more engagement with the content that you post. Um, you have to understand a little bit about the Facebook algorithm. And this actually transfers over into the Instagram algorithm as well. Um, the type of content that you need um, to post. Well, first you need to understand that people see people that see your content, it's because they've interacted with you in the past. So Facebook and Instagram realize if you've liked a lot of posts from a certain account, it will continue showing you more of that content from that certain person. So if you don't want to see someone's content in the future, don't like their posts because Instagram and Facebook just say, this must be relevant. This person must care about this person that they like, and they'll continue to show more content in the future. Um, also, the way that um, Instagram and Facebook work is they look at the type of content that you're posting. So videos and images rank a lot higher than just text type of content that you post on uh, Facebook. So they really like videos and they really like images. So um, post more of those. And then the, the algorithm looks at the popularity of the post. So if you post something and all of a sudden you get a lot of likes on it really quickly, or people start commenting on it quickly, um, it will boost it up in the algorithm so that more people see that content. So um, posts that like where people are commenting congratulations, um, you know, happy birthday or whatever it is, important moments, those do really well in the algorithm. So here's a few just tips of type of content that you should post to get more engagement. Start genuine conversations because people will comment on them. Post original videos and then highlight those important moments that happen in your office so that people will want to comment, say congratulations or say good job or whatever it might be. My last tip, and we're running out of time, um, is just have a content plan. Um, the, your plan should include photos. Um, photos are a great way to um, get engagement. And like I said, Instagram, well, Instagram is all about photos, <laughs> but um, you need to post those photos first at the right times. So they did a big study on when photos are seen the most on social media. And this was just a, you can take this for what it's worth, but they said on Wednesday and Friday from around nine to two um, PM is when they got the most engagement on photos. And they did a study in the healthcare industry specifically. And they found that from on Tuesday from about eight to two is when they got the most engagement. So take that for what it's worth, but you can actually go in the insights of your Instagram page and like I talked about before, and if you go to the bottom, it'll tell you when your followers are online. So you want to see the top uh, points of when your followers are online to post and post at those times. Post photos with faces on them. Uh, they found that uh, 
post, posts with people in them get a lot more engagement than just um, a photo with no face or with just a graphic on it. Uh, this account does a really good job at showing their team and showing the faces. It's why we do those social sign ideas because it's an idea, but it also puts a face in the photo. A uh, post carousel photos, those are multi-image photos. Uh, they do better than images as far as engagement goes. Those are the ones that you swipe to multiple images. Instagram likes that a lot because you're actually getting people to touch the screen, which means they're interested when they swipe to another photo. And then be consistent uh, in your posting. Uh, consistency is really important that uh, you're always posting uh, you know, two or three times a week. Um, Facebook looks at that as well uh, for the algorithm. Video, video actually works better than photos. Uh, more engagement happen in video and Instagram likes when you post videos because it requires people to spend more time on Instagram and that means more money for Instagram. So they really like videos. Um, you can promote those videos as well on Instagram so more people can see it. There is uh, something called IGTV. So if you have longer videos, um, you can actually post these longer videos now on Instagram. I think it's a, um, a really great place to put uh, any longer content that you have. Uh, Dr. Kate Gross does a really good job of that. If you wanna check out her account, Dr. Kate Talks. And last thing is stories. Um, I was I was talking to Erin about this because Erin does a really good job uh, with her story. She actually posted a story during COVID of just telling her patients that she was there for them and there to help them. And people like stories because it's really sincere content. And they've said, uh, this is Chris Cox. He's the chief product officer at Facebook. He said, the story format will surpass the feed in 2019 and become the main format of content creation and communication within social media. And it's kind of become that. Um, it's far surpassed Snapchat, which kind of had the original idea of stories. And it's becoming the main way that people interact on Instagram now. People are stopped, they've kind of stopped going to the feed and they just go to the stories first. Um, there's a lot of reasons why um, the stories are uh, really effective. They disappear within 24 hours, they're more real. 70% of people watch them with the sound on and there's a lot more creation tools around them. It's just a lot more fun for people to create stories. So um, I won't go into detail about stories. I, this kind of just shows what they are. Um, and you can post, they've said to post between one to seven within 24 hours. If you post more than that, people usually skip after the seventh time they click, they usually skip to the next story. So don't go too crazy with stories where there's just too many where people you know, can't handle it. There's a lot of fun engagement things that you can do with stories. You can create polls and questions. Um, these are great because you get people to interact with the post. And the more you can get people to interact with the post, the more they'll see their, your content in the future. Um, this is, I'm, I'm gonna skip past a little bit of this because we're kind of past on time. Um, I do wanna say to make highlights um, of your stories. This is a great place for you to save your story. So they don't disappear always within 24 hours. You can save them to your top of your Instagram page. And I like to think of this kind of as your nav bar of your website, but it's like a interactive nav bar at the top of your website so that people can actually see different topics that you've storied about and um, you know, check out different things. So that's, those are the highlights at, your top, at the top of your page. It looks like this. And then the bonus tip before I end is to try out Reels. Uh, Reels is a new feature of Instagram that's just like TikTok. It's they basically copied TikTok. I don't know if anybody's tried Reels yet. Here's just a couple examples I'll show you of um, how Reels work. That Placerville Ortho, if you wanna see, they do some really great uh, Reels and they, have, they do some really fun things on their page. I'll just show you these real quick. Ow. 
so the fun thing about reels lets you cut really quickly to different um, video clips and then put music over the top of it. And this content's really popular right now and people really like it. You can see some of the creative things you can do with it. Just to wrap up, uh, sorry, Aaron, I kind of went over time here, but um, we, like we're, here to, we're here to help you at My Social Practice. Um, we can help customize a solution just for you. We've been working with Erin and her practice for quite a while. Um, we do have some new things that we've added to what we do, but um, some of the current things that we do are we give you a, a calendar like this so that you know exactly what to post and when you uh, should be posting it. So we highlight different holidays. We highlight different, you know, um, those random holidays like um national burger day or hot dog day or whatever right but we we create a fun idea around it so that you can post to your accounts and we tell you what you should be posting and then we send you a box like this every two months with tons of fun ideas in it and props of things that you can post uh, with your team members to show their face and your photos but also really fun ideas that get good engagement we call these engagement boxes because it's all about getting engagement and helping you reach more people on social media. We also um, do a lot more than just social media now, and that's kind of some of the things that uh, that Aaron had mentioned. We we help you with websites. Um, we can help you with SEO. We can help you get influencers in your area. Um, we can help you get more reviews on Google. So we're kind of a whole digital marketing solution now, not just social media. Social media plays an important part in your digital marketing strategy, but we can help you across all platforms as well. And um, if you're part of this group, I'd be happy to talk with you more about this. Um, we can run a demo with you about what we do and kind of come up with a custom solution for your practice. Um, this was a download that we had just during COVID to help you um, get through this time of what you should be doing on your digital marketing tools. You can download that at info.mysocialpractice.com slash worksheet. Um, that's free from us if you'd like some more helpful tips during this time of recovery. And then here's my contact information. Uh, you can just email me, Blake at mysocialpractice.com or um, you can call us and we'd be happy to set up a time to talk with you. And that's all I have, Aaron. Awesome. Like, that was amazing. Thank you so much. I know we've, we have this Slack group and some of us have been talking about like starting our Instagrams or continuing with it. And I think a lot of us needed some direction, um, myself included. So I really appreciate it. Um, I know Ryan put a couple questions in the chat. So I thought we'd start with those. And then I had a oh, couple yeah. questions and okay. other people might as well. So Ryan's first question was, um, Last time we talked a lot about like a personal brand page. We've talked a little bit to Brian Harris, but I know in this group, it's younger doctors who are wanting to start practices. And so his question mm -hmm. is, um, can you combine both personal and practice pages? And Ryan, just jump in if you want to add to that a little bit, or like I have one separate, but then I'm not great about managing them because it's like I'm flipping back and forth. So what's your advice on a doctor who's going to be kind of having both? Yeah, I, I think you can. And, um, I think that's fine to combine a personal and practice page, especially because most of you probably don't have time to post to two different accounts. It's hard to manage two different accounts. Um, unless, yeah, unless you're Brian Harris, who, you know, he has kind of a separate business on the side and different business on the side and he has his practice business. Right. So he obviously has, I think he has someone helping him with the other account and he's posting to his personal account. So, um, I think it's fine to combine both and you can kind of structure your posts. So maybe the first post is something personal about you. Second post is something about your practice, something happening in your practice. Um, that, that's fine to do. But if you really want to like get into, um, you know, trying to be, you know, Insta famous or something, you might want to create two different accounts. So <laughs> does it depend to if you have like a multi-doctor practice versus like just your name as the practice would that make a difference yeah yeah i i would say so um obviously the practice page will cover that if you have multi multiple doctors and you assign someone on your team to just talk about both of your all your doctors and what's going on in your practice i think that's the easiest way to cover all of that um but you could have each doctor have their own personal page as well 
and they kind of feed off of each other and they tag each other and stuff like that. So that might be a good way to do it as well. Awesome. Ryan, does that, hopefully that helps. You can jump in Ryan, if you need to. That's perfect. Okay. No, thank you. All right. Cool. <laughs> and then his other question, or Ryan, do you just want to yeah. We're good. We're second question's already answered. He already, it was on the bonus round. Oh, yeah. We're good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Reels, cool. I, reels is awesome. I, you know, I haven't personally done a lot of reels. I've seen practices that have been doing it. Um, right now would be a good time to jump on reels and start messing around with it because whenever Instagram releases anything new, they um, favor that content more. So they show more people their new, you know, any of the new technology that they have, they like to push that out more. So right now would be a good time to try reels and to probably get more uh, seen by more people. Awesome. Okay. Um, I had a question about giveaways or did, did someone have one? I don't, um, my question about giveaways was about Facebook versus Instagram. Like I'm doing a mm -hmm. quick giveaway right now for a kid's toothbrush and we posted it on both Facebook and Instagram. Is that something that you'd recommend or should I have picked one platform? You know, I, I think it's fine to do both. And um, yeah, it's just two places you have to check for entries, which yeah. is, uh, but it, the thing with Facebook right now, it, unless you put money into Facebook, like boosting your posts, it doesn't get seen by very many people. That initial, like you post the giveaway and initially to try to get people to the page to tag people, it just doesn't, it just doesn't get seen by many people. You have to put some money into it. Um, Instagram, I feel like more people will see it initially, especially if you do the post, make a story about that giveaway post, say go to our post and enter our post, more people are gonna see your Instagram post initially. Um, but it's okay to do it on both platforms. Just okay. make sure you don't copy and paste your um, rules they, it, it's going to be a little bit different, right? So if on Instagram, you might say it a little bit differently, um, you know, how you want people to enter. Okay. For example, you would say, follow us on Instagram and tag one of your friends in the comments. And on Facebook, you might say, like us, like this post, like us, you know, just make sure you change your captions depending on the platform that you use. Got it. I didn't even think of that. I'll have to check that now. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And then you mentioned boosting. Um, I've done that on Facebook. Do you feel like that's a worthwhile thing to even do? Definitely. I, I We encourage our practices to boost um, almost every one of your posts to your local geographic area for maybe you know, three to five dollars, you can put a, okay. a low amount, three dollars into it. And if people start liking it and commenting it, you, you'll know that it's at least people are seeing it and then people are engaging with it. So, you know, it's good content and then you can put a little bit more money into it if people start interacting with it. But three to five dollars into um, your post, if you're posting three times a week or two times a week, it's not too much. Um, and I think definitely it's worth it if you want people to see the content, so. Cool. Does anyone have any other Quick questions? Question. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a personal one for you, Blake. Okay. So beh behind you, top shelf, you have a thumbs up live feed counter. Yeah. Is that worth it, it to have in our practice? Could be kind of fun. It actually, it actually went off when I was speaking. Yeah, and I, don't know I if saw you heard it. it. It was like, it was like ticking. I have it set up so it's like once a day it goes off. You can have it go off like instantaneously when people like your like your page on Facebook. It'll go to the next one. Um, but yeah, I, I'm actually talking with the company. It's a company called uh, Smurl. S M. I it's S M I I R L I think. And, um, I, I think it's a great idea to put in your, on your, uh, you know, in your waiting room or wherever on your front desk. And it's a good way to try to encourage people to say, Hey, we're trying to reach this many followers. You can do it with Instagram too. It has a little Instagram logo. Right. on it. You say, we're trying to get this many followers and it's kind of fun for them because they can click on follow and then instantaneously the, the they visually see it clip yeah they Will visually see it the so link it's kind to of that cool. too Blake yeah okay yeah thank you I'm talking with them soon too I'm trying to work a deal with them for our clients um, should should we wait to buy one until you work that deal up <laughs> yeah maybe okay maybe. sweet <laughs> I'm gonna I'll, 
I'll try to work a deal and then I'll uh, send you guys a discount code or something. Cool. Yeah, here's uh, it's this company here. Yeah, and they're I think they're based out of Paris. Maybe actually this this site is in French, so I don't know. They must have a U.S. Oh, okay. There's a U English one. Yeah, so I, I think it's a cool idea. That's awesome. If you want to try it out, so. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have yeah. any questions that you can, anyone? Otherwise, Blake, um, we will send you emails, I guess, if we think of anything. And I know some of the group is watching this later after I get it to them. So I will yeah. let them know that you'd be happy to answer any questions. And um, thank you so much. This was really helpful. Yeah. And we're going to get our Instagrams together. And then uh, we'll uh, <laughs> hopefully at some point you can take a look at the next Crown Council event or something. Let us know how we're doing. Yeah, that would be awesome. No, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, you are welcome. And then the rest of the group, we're going to stay on for a little bit. So thank you, Blake. Okay, we'll see you guys. All right, have a good night. Okay. Bye. okay.